What is Rainbow Budgie? For many, this is one of the most beautiful mutations out there. Actually, a lot of you have asked me to make a video about this mutation. But here's the thing. There isn't a single gene that produces this mutation. Rather, it's a combination of genetic mutations working together. But more on that later. For now, we will look at this amazing mutation, understand what it really is, why is it called rainbow, and how to produce it. Instead of answering what is rainbow budgie, let's answer why is it called rainbow. That actually would make more sense. This mutation is called rainbow because a budgie with this mutation actually resembles a rainbow with the multicolored, beautifully blended plumage. A rainbow has mainly seven colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. A typical rainbow budgie shows almost all of them except red, because budgies don't naturally produce red pigment. And since orange it's a mix of red and yellow, so orange is out of the picture as well. So we start from yellow, then move through green, blue, and sometimes even a touch of violet, depending on the genetic combination. And actually, this is the exact order how would a rainbow budgie look, starting from yellow and ending with blue or violet. Rainbow budgies get their colorful look from specific mutations that reduce black markings and enhance the bright body colors, creating that soft pastel rainbow effect. Some rainbow budgies even have the gray factor or violet factor, which slightly changes the tone, giving some birds a cooler or deeper rainbow appearance. Now that we understand why it's called rainbow, let's talk about what actually makes it look that way. There isn't a single rainbow gene. Instead, a rainbow budgie is the result of several different mutations working together to create this stunning look. To produce a true rainbow budgie, you need four key ingredients. Step 1. Start with a blue series budgie. Why blue? Well, two reasons. First, the rainbow naturally includes blue. And more importantly, only blue series budgies can gain green coloration through other mutations, while green series budgies can't turn blue. We talked about this in detail in my full documentary about budgie colors. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to refresh your memory about the difference between blue and green budgies. Ok, step 1 is complete. Here we've got our blue budgie. What's next? Step 2 add the opaline mutation. Let's enhance that body color from the back. How do we do that? For that, we'll go with an opaline blue budgie. Instead of having black and white wings, an opaline shows soft black and blue wings, another step in the right direction. We remove the white and switch it with a blue. I'll also link my opaline budgie mutation video in the description if you want to see examples after this one. Perfect! We now have a blue opaline budgie. So what's next? Step 3. Add yellow face type 2 or golden face mutation. This step is crucial because it brings in the yellow and green hues that complete the rainbow look. You'll need either a single factor yellow face type 2 or double factor golden face. Both create that yellow suffusion over the blue body, forming that signature turquoise shade. We've already done a deep dive on yellow face mutations, I'll leave that link in the description as well. With step 3 completed, we're almost there. Take a look at this blue opaline yellow face budgie. You can already see how close we're getting to the full rainbow. And finally, step 4, we add the clear wing mutation. This is the last piece, clear wing. We've covered this mutation in our video about the dilution gene. It lightens the wing markings and lets those bright colors shine through. With that step completed, we have officially assembled every ingredient that makes up a true rainbow budgie. 
it is very important to stick to these rules. Otherwise, look how this blue series budgie with a single factor yellow face type 2 looks. It's not opaline or clear wing, so it's not a true rainbow. Don't get me wrong, this bird looks beautiful, but it's not rainbow. Another example is this budgie, very beautiful budgie, but it's clear wing with yellow face mutation that is other than the two we talked about, so the green doesn't spread enough across its body. And also, since it's not an opaline, we don't see the body color from the back for a true rainbow. Once you have your rainbow budgie, you can add extra mutations for variation. Gray factor adds a soft gray wash across the body. And these budgies look stunning. Violet factor deepens the blue tones and finally completes the rainbow spectrum from yellow all the way to violet. These budgies are amazing as well. You can see if we add the gray factor how a rainbow budgie would look with gray wash over. And if you add the violet factor, how we actually get all the rainbow colors. You can have a full body gray wing as well and other variations that do give you stunning budgies. While they are not true rainbows per se, but they still look amazing. Some may argue they look better than a true rainbow. Look at this budgie for example, it does look stunning. This is a full body color gray wing opaline blue budgie with a yellow face mutation. So it's almost the same as a true rainbow, but we switched the clear wing with full body gray wing. Now let's dive into some genetics and see how can we produce rainbow budgies. I will start with how can we ensure a 100% rainbow offspring. And for that, we need the two parents to be blue. That will ensure 100% blue offspring. And with that, we covered the first step, which states that rainbows have to be blue. Next, opaline. We know from the opaline mutation, if both parents are opaline, then 100% of the offspring will be opaline. That's already two steps towards producing rainbow budgie. Now, the more difficult part are the other two steps. Single factor yellow face type 2 or double factor golden face, mixed with the clear wing mutation. If we want 100% of the offspring to be rainbows, then we need the parents not only to be clear wing, but both alleles to be clear wing. But we will discuss later what happens if not both of the alleles are clear wing. So, two parents both having clear wing clear wing alleles that will ensure the offspring to be 100% clear wing. And finally, for the yellow face mutation, we have two different possibilities. One possibility is one parent without any yellow face mutation, and second parent having double factor yellow face type 2. And you can see from the Punnett square how all the offspring will be single factor yellow face type 2. Or another possibility is having both parents with double factor golden face which obviously all the offspring will inherit the double factor golden face. And now we can check the last remaining requirement, ensuring 100% rainbow offspring. Now these are the only two possibilities to have 100% rainbow offspring. You can see that both of them have the exact same thing. Both parents are blue series, both parents are opaline, and both parents are homozygous clear wing, or in another words, their alleles are clear wing clear wing. The only difference is with the yellow face mutation. You can produce rainbow offspring from either one parent being normal blue and the other parent double factor yellow face type 2, or having both parents double factor golden face. Let's go back and see what happens if both parents are rainbows. And this time, we will take their clear wing mutation to be clear wing dilute for both parents. And let's say both parents have single factor yellow face type 2, since they are rainbows. What happens now? In the dilution Punnett square, we can see that 75% of the offspring will be clear wing. And looking at the yellow face type 2 Punnett square, we can see that only 50% of the offspring will have single factor yellow face type 2 which means 50% or in other words half of the offspring only will be single factor yellow face type 2 
which means half of the 75% of the clear wings that we got from the clear wing Punnett square will also have single factor yellow face type 2. So the end result would be 37.5% of the total offspring are rainbows. Don't get confused, it's just a simple multiplication between the two Punnett squares, 75% of the 50%, or 50% of the 75% gives us 37.5%. When we have multiple outcomes from multiple Punnett squares, all we have to do is multiply the result and see what we get. Let's take a final example and see how many rainbows we get from these two parents. We'll take a female opaline with a male opaline carrier. In that case, 50% of the offspring will be opaline. Next, let's say one parent is full body color gray wing and the other is gray wing having gray wing dilution alleles. In that case, 25% of the offspring will be clear wing. And finally, let's say one of the parents is green budgie but carrying the yellow face type 2 mutation and the other parent is blue budgie. In that case, we can see that 50% of the offspring will be green and 50% will be single factor yellow face type 2 budgies. In the first Punnett square, we can see that 50% of the offspring are opaline. Of these, 25% will also be clear wing, which brings us down to 12.5%. Finally, 50% of those are single factor yellow face type 2 meaning that only about 6.25% of the total offspring from these two parents will actually be true rainbows. Or in other words, about one in every 16 chicks would turn out to be a rainbow. But we can also see that one out of 16 will be full body color gray wing, which is also a very beautiful, almost a rainbow budgie as we've seen before. So if we add these two, we will have one out of every eight chicks will either be true rainbow or full body color gray wing rainbow, which is an absolute beauty as well. And it goes without saying, if you want to add some gray or violet, you just need to add a parent with these mutations and it will be added to your rainbow budgie to look even more amazing. I'm not gonna go into details for these two mutations as we have already covered its genetics. You can go and check those two videos for their genetics, but it's really easy since these two genes are actually dominant. As long as one parent have them, you have probabilities for the offspring to have them as well. And there you have it. Now you know exactly what makes a rainbow budgie, how the genetics work behind it, and what kind of pairing can actually produce one. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share it with other budgie lovers. It really helps spread awareness and support the channel. Want to support Budgie World and get cute perks? Hit the join button, it means a lot and helps keep the videos flying.